I think it's fair to say that sometimes life can be a bit heavy, serious and full on, whereas in reality, is all we want it to be is a bit more fun, which is why I've created this, a completely over the top, full on car camping setup in an equally ridiculously small sized car. This is a 1.1 Kia Picanto. And now it's all kitted out with about three tons worth of equipment. It's been renamed The Biscuit Tim. Over the past month, we've been slowly kitting this out and getting it to this stage. It does need a little bit of a lick of paint and maybe some carpeting as well for now. But for the most part, it's ready to rumble and test out. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's episode. I've got a little spot, middle of nowhere, where no one's gonna bother us, where we can get everything out on this setup and try it out for the first time. Whether I'm gonna be sleeping in it tonight or not, I don't honestly know. We do have one major, major problem with it that is really, really dangerous that I'll show you in a little bit. But for now, I'm excited. Let's get our shiznit together and let's get over to the spot. Oh my days, this could be bad. I've been driving over here and it's all I've been seeing around there is flooded fields. The whole of Leicestershire, or Leicester if you don't know, sits in an old volcanic crater. So it's really far down and the whole of it is kind of a floodplain, especially this side of it where I am now, a little place called Burra on Saw. We're going to a field. Oh, it's looking good. <laughs> Let's just have a remember the code for the gate. Happy days, we're in, we're in. Let's go. Don't know where I'm gonna park. So may not too bugger. Jeez, it all looks bugger. Oh mama. Oh my days, I've got to show you this. We have a high potential <laughs> for sinking. Oh my days, look at the state of the ground here. Proper bog first. I've just had a little walk around, see where I'm gonna park up. I was hoping I could park over here. Look how high the canal is. It's almost at bubbling over point. And there's pools of water down there. I don't think I'm gonna go down here. All the way up here is mud. I think there's a patch over there if I can get to it. It's not flat, but I'll make it work. This might not have been the best idea. I was gonna come here yesterday, but it was heavy rain. It looks like it's sodden the ground. I've got to be honest, oh, I don't really know what the policy is through driving through boggy mud. Oh, I guess it's just don't get bloody stuck. Holy sh**. Oh no, this is bad. Oh mate, this is really bad. Uh oh. No man, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I've just got stuck. Holy sh**, I'm stuck already. Oh my god. This was a really bad idea. Oh, this was a bad idea. What? No way. Right, I'm just gonna pitch here, that's it. I'm not even gonna attempt to go any further. Nightmare, we're bogged in. Oh my God. We're legit bogged in. Oh my God. Nightmare. I'm not gonna get out of here. This is not gonna happen. Oh my God. Look at the state of the car already. Oh, shiznit. I'm definitely not getting out of that. All right, well, it is what it is. Um, we're in a boggy patch. I'm gonna change my shoes. <laughs> Let's just do this. <laughs> this is a bad idea, I knew it. Bollocks. I'm gonna have to call someone later and get me, pull me out. Bollocks. Right, good news and bad. The good news is, I've got my boots on. Even more good news, we're actually on a proper little flat spot now. The bad news, Freaking A mate, I'm further into the field. There's no chance of me getting out. I'm gonna to have to pull up, call a recovery vehicle later on or something, but uh, this episode, I assume, is gonna be one disaster after another. The end of this build became a disaster. It's cost me a GoPro already. It fell off the roof and got crushed by a car. It's in absolute pieces, so I think we just, the look's gone, mate, and we're just gonna to have to roll with it until it comes back. The reason I'm saying all this is because the next thing I'm gonna do is the roof tent, and I've never done it before. Pete, guy who gave it me, showed me about a month ago 
and well since then I forgot from what I vaguely remember I think I have to set these straps off first and then they kind of pull over this side try not to smash your window out with the actual buckles and then yeah velcros on the corners and somewhere around here there should be a zip that undoes Right, so far so good, and I've just had a moment. With the other roof temp, I have a little stool that I use to like, well, just sort it out. I haven't brought it with me. I really hope I don't need it for this one. I think this is how you do it. I'm not entirely sure. Holy shit. Um, you might just check, there might have been another strap. I don't know, there's a bar in there. It's for something. Whoa, here we go. Uh, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. I really don't know. I can't remember. Jesus. Yeah, kind of. Right, uh. Oh shit, yeah! I got a feeling it's something to do with this ladder. Oh Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think we're set. I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something. Ah, you know what as well? Oh, check it out. Ah, ah, I think I know what that pole's for. Look, there's a little holy duff thing there. And this will pull it out. Look how cool it looks inside though. Memory foam mattress. Oh, it's just so nice and it smells like new tent. And the material for it, honestly, it's so thick and sort of like you know it's gonna it's gonna last. It's not thin crappy tent material. Really good man. Let me get this pole in. We'll have a look at the shape for sure. Bloody hell, great. Pole's in, covered in freaking mud, isn't it? Because it fell on the floor. Last thing I want to do is cover the bloody tent all in mud first time I use it. It's state of that. Got it. Hey. I might have said it already in this episode, but uh yeah, I don't think this was a good idea. <laughs> I don't know now. I'm, I'm assuming this just pulls over this thing somehow. Uh, like that, I guess. Maybe not. Is that what it's supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know where that goes. Kind of looks like it should go here. And it's kind of holding it. Frigo. Kind of looks the right shape. It keeps dripping, sipping. Oh, I don't know. Ah, oh, wicked, mate. Sorted it. Let me show you. The bar basically just pushes sort of up inside of this thing and then normally yeah you'd, you'd pull it taut with a couple of ropes here yeah i'm not going to do that today am i of course just going to get bogged in even more but i mean it's not the perfect shape but it's a pretty good shape you can pull it all taut there's all windows that pop out and roof lights and such there's even an actual light in there although i've not looked at it let's have a little peruse somewhere in here pete was saying Ah, uh, might be that strip light up there. Oh yeah, there's the USB cable. So you just need a little power unit or something. And you've got light in here as well. As I say, I'm not gonna be trying this out tonight. Apart from being bogged in, but there's one main reason. And this is a nightmare and I'm really angry about it. Let me show you. These roof bars here, that's gonna be difficult to show you, but that one there is pretty much absolutely flush here. Underneath flush to the rim there this front one however is not look at the gap there that's a big old gap and then it's really not flush on there and the other two on the other side are exactly the same as this one they kind of look like they're slipping off and if you follow the series you'll know when i got these roof bars from alfred's i wanted them to fit them for me they weren't busy that day and they kind of almost refused to fit them just telling me they were so easy to fit that they don't fit them so I could fit them myself. The guy spent 20 minutes showing me how to fit them. He could have fitted them himself in 20 minutes. The next day, I got the roof bunk fitted and a month later, I think they're slipping off. There's no way I want to go on a big trip with it like that or definitely not to Morocco. So tomorrow morning, if I can get this car out of this field at 11 o'clock, I'm supposed to be going back down Alfords to get them resorted. But the roof bunk's gonna be on the car. And I know what Alfred's are like, they won't touch it because of it. I've explained it, so we'll see if they'll help me lift the roof bunk off 
and fit those roof bars properly. Imagine that slipping off on the motorway at 65 mile an hour. Pile up on a disaster and people are getting killed, mate, because Alfred's wouldn't have fitted me roof bars when I asked them to. Sad, but true. Moreover, for now, though, I want to get the rest of the setup sorted. I've got, and this is what I wanted to do, try and just bling out everything that I possibly could. Got a tarp, I think, that I'm going to pull out the left-hand side. Just for look, just see how it goes. I might actually take it with me to Morocco. So, yeah, let's get that set up. Should be pretty good, this tarp. I've had it, honestly, for about... I don't know, four or five months now. One of you guys sent it over to me and it's got poles and everything, so it's a proper big top. Hopefully I can tie it somehow to the side of the car and just have it out. Realistically, it might be better on the tent, but yeah, for now, we'll do it on the car. Oh, this should be pretty simps. Just tie a mad Uber knot. Oh my God, somewhere on there. And then hook it up on the eyelet. Theoretically, said he wants to try it. We'll say it again. This was not a good idea. Shuffling ropes covered in mud. Oh, that's freaking horrible. Damn it. Why I couldn't have done this a week ago when it was nice weather? No, not again in the mud. Barracks. Oh, yeah, man. It's flicking everywhere as well. You know how it does. Got it. Right. I'm, I'm honestly not struggling with this tarp at all. And I'm also, honestly, not absolutely covered in mud either and also realizing oh, i've done it the wrong bleeding way around but don't worry about it we'll make it work probably not right there's my steak and not me meat the bloody steak for the rope at least the bloody ground soft and i can get a steak in easy <sighs> well tops up and i gotta say it yeah it needs work possibly Needs an extra pole or something just so I can probably pin that far corner out. Yeah, I'll show you. Obviously, I'll pin these two down in this corner, but didn't really know where to put this one, so I've ended up like pulling it over and tying it off on well, just a hook here that was there. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, that, that didn't work, did it? Bollocks. Yeah, bit of a problem. Damn it. I've tied it off wrong. Oh, crap. <sighs> I could turn it round, but I don't know. Damn it. Oh, mate, I think I've been here about two hours now, and yeah, we're nearly ready. Bloody hell. I'll be the first to admit that top needs a lot more practice. I need to get it sorted. Maybe out in a car park where I can test it properly and easily, but imagine. I mean, look at this now. Imagine this on a beach or next to a beach in Spain. Certainly not on the beach, because I'm already bogged in here. I don't want to get bogged in in sand, but... You know what I'm saying? Spain, Morocco, wherever. Full setup, mate. Just set up, chilling for a few days with all this out, cooking out the back, tent for the sea view in the morning, tarp for chilling out the sun. It's gonna be amazing. But I've gotta be honest, what I think I'm gonna do, I might leave the tarp for now. It's probably gonna blow away at some point, but uh, yeah, I wanna try and get some scran on. Oh no, wait. There is one other thing I wanted to try. I'm not sure that's a good idea in this boggy field, but hey ho, solar. You see somewhere, oh my days, hang on. Bloody Nora, this is hard work. <laughs> Down here, oh, oh, oh no, crap, oh, bloody hell. All right, hang on, oh gee, everything. Yeah, down here, anyway. Oh my God, somewhere in there, there's a solar cable that uh, oh, I need to feed through this little gap. What? <laughs> and then we can test it. We forgot to pull it through, that's all. <sighs> there they are, look, I wasn't lying. Ooh, I'm not sure they'll fit through that gap. Oh dear. Bloody hell, it's, uh, uh, yeah, there's a metal bar there as well. Oh yeah, that's easy. Hey, got it, oh. Got you as well, cool. Can't be honest, I do want to test this out because I don't think we've actually tested the solar out yet to see if it works. I mean, all right, it's a bit cloudy and crap today, but we should get a few bars of energy. Uh, this is not a good idea, is it? In a muddy, bleeding field. Whatever. Golden Bennett. Got to say it though. Do you like this Blue Etty solar panel, big sharp Blue Etty? Um, just how it works. The kickstand's wicked, mate. Just makes life easy. Oh, crap. Ah, don't think the cable's going to reach. Good news. It now reaches. 
Right, it's all wired in. Let's see what it's saying on the old Victron Connect thing. Um, solar, smart solar. Uh, yeah, frig all coming in. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Zero, zero, zero. Wait, two volts, three volts, four watts. Oh man, it is. It's getting something. That's wicked, mate. It is actually working. 0.3 amps coming in. Mate, I've got solar power. I just need a bloody smaller solar panel. Anybody? 100 watt will do nice. All powers, blue air, eco flow. Um, I'm not choosing. But yeah, this 200 watt, it is good, but it's a bit big for this setup. Do you know what I mean? It's not getting much power though. I think I might pack it away. Just wanted to test it. Happy days, four volts now. Nice. Right. Somewhere in here, I've got a barbecue. My God, I will never be bringing this with me ever again. There's no way I can fit this in, but I just wanted to bring it this one time to cook outside. And great news if you're a regular to the series, I've found the griddles that go on it so I can actually cook properly. I might be missing a few bits though, so we'll see. Ah, damn it, bigger as much. I've not got the little hook for the bloody lid here. Oh well, let's not use it. That'll work. Oh my god, head's getting too hot. Can't wear it. New Wondering Where Beena, the new Stay Stealthy 2.0. It's got like little flex in it and it's really thick, different material from the last one. I think we've only got a handful of them on the site if there's any left by the time this video goes out. So yeah, the new black, the new Stay Stealthy. Sight of it, but bloody hell, it's a bit warm for today. Right, I honestly don't really know what order to do this in. I've got quite a bit to cook. Um, I don't think I'm going to do some of the things because uh, it's just too much for me. I was going to do chips with this and fry them out on here just to use this for once, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to bother. There's going to be enough going on the barbecue. Ah, uh, let's see. What's in the box, Dr. Cotton? Oh yeah, you know, you know. Ribs, no less. Oh, wicked, mate. And quite a few other bits. Sweet calm bacon for the morning which hey ho i don't think we're gonna need that now salad for the uh oh yes ultimate burgers mate no doubt and a bit of cheesy to go on top we're living the dream here oh and the sauces to be honest you know i think i'm gonna light the fire before i actually stop prepping the food just give it a little bit of time to warm up and cool down if that makes sense you know what I mentioned this episode was going to be a bit of a disaster here, there and everywhere, didn't I? More mud. And, uh, yeah, it is. And so I've got the coals here. Well, I didn't bring any freaking fire lighters, did I? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Boy, you got to be kidding me, mate. Just add a match. Lights in an instant. Burns for the evening. Light the bag here. It's a plastic freaking bag, mate. What the friggle? Oh, this does not bode well. I should have brought fire lighters. I must have about 500 at home. What a muppet. Yeah, light here, my ass. This ain't working. Just light the bag. That's the lighter. Well, it ain't lighting. Honestly, does it or does it not say light bag here? I can't light it there, can I? That's like the bloody side of the bag, isn't it? Ain't gonna work. How's that gonna work? Needs to light a corner or something. Bloody nightmare. It ain't lighting. This is a freaking disaster. It's lighting. Kind of. It's just gonna melt, isn't it? It's bloody plastic. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is gonna work, isn't it? My ass. I'll be amazed. Please, amaze me. Please. It's going out, dude. And if it goes out after it's done off the bag, I'm right in the shiznit. I need bog roll, quickly. This ain't happening, I'm not feeling it. It's gone out. Damn it, I'm back with a bog roll and it seems to be working, but not how I want it to. I'm not happy with that. I mean, they say the genius, these things, don't they? But are they really? I'm not sure. We're about to find out. Uh, okay, now I'm getting worried it's gonna burn too fast and I've not got the meat ready. Let's hurry up. I need, oh, God, I'm oh, I'm oh stiff. Yeah, I'm up here. Oh, there's the cobs I need. Oh, there it is. 
Lucky Emma. Oh, dang. Just had a bit of a moment. Thought I'd left this in the other car. This has got all my knives and forks and such like that. And this is another reason I need this day. Just to get out here and sort of know that I've got everything that I need in here. And like, all right, I'm not going to sleep, but yeah, I pretty much got that sorted. Blankets and window covers. Although I might upgrade those at some point, but yeah, not at the minute. But yeah, just to get out and test it all, you know. <sighs> Bollocks. Check this out as well, though. Nightmare. It's the cheap stuff. Honestly, even an Audi man these days. Tim foil. They wanted me to remortgage my house for a roll of tin foil. Ludicrous. This is on par with a one-pound shop, you know. 99p. And it should do the trick. Ah, oh, look at me little chopping board as well, man. Stoked. Yes, that'll work. This is really nice. Being able to stand up and cook. I can't deny it. First time ever. Normally hunched in the crib. Smells are going everywhere. It's not the best. This is nice. Getting all this over my hands and not having a tissue sorted though. Yeah, that ain't great. Little fold over and a little fold under. Game on. We do have, we'll have one problem now. Yeah, the fire's looking crap. It's not looking good. Right, just to be clear, those bloody coals went out and they didn't light. So I'm now attempting I don't know what I'm doing, but hey ho, this is what I'm doing. Trying to light it myself with a few twigs and whatnot, and no fire lighters. Legend. A lot of my hands up. If I can't get this lit, we will be cooking on the stove something. I don't know what. Not a clue. <laughs> ah, disaster. All right, let's see if this works. Ah, no. I really hope so. Out. Right, I'm going to hold my hands up. This is not turning out the way I'd planned it. I think I'm going to have to cook it on the stove, but you know what? I'm going to have five minutes and have a brew first. This is a bit of a nightmare. Ah, you know what? I think it might have been a good idea that I just stopped for coffee. It's given me a minute to think, realistically. Nothing has gone how I wanted it to go today. It's nearly three o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to be dark in an hour and a half. I think it might be the best option to try and get a recovery truck down here now to try and rescue me. Due to the fact I need to be at Alfred tomorrow at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, I need to be out of this field tonight. We can maybe cut losses and maybe go down to some car park and cook up a little feed and chill in the back. But yeah, I think I'm going to get serious, start packing up and try and get rescued. This is not good. It's about 50 metres to that gate and there's no way a recovery truck can come in here. Fingers crossed. Oh, nightmare. I've just called the AA who I'm with and they told me they can't help me because I'm not next to the road. They said if I was a couple of three metres next to the road, they can get someone down to pull me out. Because I'm so far, they can't. They've got to call like a specialist garage and then that garage is going to call me and let me know how much I've got to actually pay to pull the car out. I'm thinking 150 quid. You know what these things are like. What a nightmare. Total disaster. The whole thing. Got it. <laughs> Move it on. Well, things are getting worse. Not not kind of funny anymore. Um, just called the AA again. Waited over an hour and a half now for them to call me back. Nobody's called me back. They said it could be hours. Maybe tomorrow morning when they call me back. I've rang around and there's nobody else that can help me like just push it out. If I had three or four people, yeah, you'd have it out of here in five minutes, no problem, but there's nobody to help me push it. So I'm gonna give it one go. I think there's about a 0.1% chance that I'm gonna be able to get out of here. I don't know what to do. Let's give it a go. I guess I'm gonna go forward a little bit first and then just slam it in reverse and go for it. Yep, that's going nowhere at first. Oh man, no way. Just, nah, totally, totally stuck. <sighs> well, the emotional roller coaster turns and it's turned in a good way. I've managed to get somebody to come and pick me up. Ashley, oh mate, you're an absolute legend. I don't know what to say, you know, like you go through life and sometimes like, 
York up with some really good people and yeah Ashley's that nobody else can help me I've got nobody to help and the AA's looking like they can't help me either it was weird when I called them back you get an automated message going yeah we know you've you've called this problem already uh, the next available service is midday 1st of January I was like what and then when I spoke to the guy, he was like, yeah, we're still looking for somebody. I mean, it's been over two hours now and nobody's called me. So I've got a feeling I could be sat here till tomorrow morning. Thank goodness somebody's coming over in three or four hours to, to tow me out. Shouldn't really be touching them with my muddy fingers, but hey ho. There we go. Bit of light, mate. Chilling. In the biscuit tin, mate. <laughs> Honestly, like the past week towards the end of doing this Kia build, like getting it towards the end, has been a disaster with the GoPro and then everything that's occurred today and a few other bits I won't mention. Yeah, it's um it's been a testing time. But hey, it is what it is. We move on and we move forward. And that's what I'm gonna do because oh, I've got something pretty funky. I'm stoked about this, mate. Check this out a little percolator coffee maker we've got about two and a half three hour wait so i thought i'd treat myself and get it out of the box and make one of those bad boys up to be honest after the day we've had this is probably not the best idea water and electrics inside the car but hey whatever i mean what else could go wrong what <laughs> I'm gonna have to get like, oh yeah. I'm gonna have to get boards and just things I can lay out so I'm not actually gonna be using the carpet for cooking on and making brews and things like this. I don't wanna spill stuff all over it and have stains on it. I'm trying to keep it real nice. It looks nice. I keep it that way. One mouthful and you're done type thing. But hey ho, uh, Jason gave me this, wicked mate. He had it in his, in his unit and oh, I guess no one used it. So yeah, I'll make damn good use out of it. I've even, uh, I've even somewhere. Oh mate, wherever it is. Hey uh, No, can't get that totally out. Oh yeah, fancy coffee. Proper Sumatran coffee, mate. I've got to tell you, it is good. I've had it totally raw, mate, off the tree type thing in Sumatra. Do remember years ago, Sumatra's a pretty far gone place, and. I took a bus into the middle of absolute nowhere and um, there was probably a full bus and slowly but surely everybody started getting off the bus until in the very end there was only me and the driver on the bus and being Indonesia, Giza was like, oh mate, you're Farang or you're white, I'll take you back to my place and I'll feed you and have some food and yeah, he had a load of this Sumatran coffee and it was damn fine. He did however, after that, take me up the road and drop me in the middle of nowhere in some crossroads. I was trying to get to some jungle camp, which luckily I got to, but yeah, that's another tale. For now, let's make a brew. Wicked mate, I'll tell you what, that smells so good. And these, these are the things I'm really looking forward to moving forward with this build. Just chilling in the morning or something or in the evening with a nice coffee. Don't spill it, don't spill it. It might be enough. <sighs> It's gonna be nice. I mean, even tonight, look. We've got a nice little sunset going on. It's pretty sweet. For now, it's all about the coffee, mate. Wicked. Ah, oh, this thing, I've got to tell you, I plugged it into my EcoFlow. Oh no, I shouldn't have said that. I plugged it into a power station the other day and um, yeah, it overloaded, mate. It rocks 170 watts coming out of a 12 volt. So yeah, it's pretty full on power wise, but hey, this setup, doesn't seem to be bothered. We've actually, these ports here, the 12 volts, the wiring on them will take a massive amount of electric. I'm not gonna quote it because I don't really know, but they're not silly little thin ass cables that you normally get on those sockets. For that specific reason, so I can plug decent stuff into it and not have to worry about it. If you remember and follow the series, like some of my power stations actually overheated one of my sockets in the Galaxy and burnt it out. So yeah, they're not built well in the cars but this has been bought by us. So oh, let's see what she's pulling. Oh wow, bloody hell man. No way, 200, 198 watts coming off that. <laughs> Just off a little percolator thing like that. And hey ho, oh, we're loving it. Oh, down to 97%, that's not good. 
Anyway, taking 32, what's just sitting there? Chica. Oh, to be fair, that's probably a combo of all my uh, lights in the fridge going. Damn, 97%. I literally just tried this coffee machine out yesterday and then I boiled it again today and ran these bits. I've used 3% of power. It's going to be so intriguing as I move forward to see how long this power lasts and how well it charges up when I'm driving around. I hope it's better than the power stations. I, I never had any real way of recharging them up. You can hook them up, the big ones, to your main battery so it charges when you're driving, but yeah 150 200 pound cable and then running it all to where you're going to position your power unit you know this is a nice tidy setup you know all under the hatch in there and then just wide in for every device a proper build it's wicked mate it is wicked needs a few tweaks but we'll get there oh and if you're wondering about the plastic board <laughs> yeah mate there's no way i'm taking the risk it's just going to happen so that'll soak up and catch all the coffee when i spill it not if Holy shit, isn't it? It's strong. It's not actually that warm. It's not cold. I need to drink it quick. Oh, God, it's strong. Actually, like one of them. Proper slaps you when you take a sip of it. <sighs> well, I was going to go in for number two, wasn't I? But something's telling me I might have had enough already. You know what, there's one of them things on TikTok, it's some Indian dude and it's just like some guy talking over some stuff and he goes on about life and he's like, not every day is a great day, I can't remember it exactly, but not every day is a great day, sometimes life just wants to f*** you over and it doesn't matter what you do or how hard you try, life that day is just going to f*** you. There's only one thing you can do when life wants to f you that much is to turn around, go home, and wait for the next day. Life decides. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I apologise for the bleeps, but I reckon that profit on TikTok's got it about right, mate. Today I should have just turned around and gone back home. On the other side, if I do smash another coffee, I'll be so wired I might be able to go to a bloody rave on the way home. I think I'd be ready for it. But hey, hey two hours to wait i'll tell you what though it's getting a bit nippy in here i'm gonna have to get the heater on and here's the thing this kind of gives me a chance to cover some stuff oh bloody hell get that bloody heater out oh yeah there it is yeah solar so the reason we uh plug the cable in as opposed to having a solar panel on the roof we were going to do that but because we've got the roof tent on there the option really was to have a sliding solar panel and it would have only been able to come out of one side which if you think the sun moves around would have spent the whole day moving the car around if I'm parked up for the day just to try and get a bit of solar power that is why we ended up having a portable solar panel hanging out the back if I get a long enough cable I can put that thing anywhere if I'm parked up for the day and then there's the heater we were going to put a diesel heater in this car and it would have gone exactly under where I'm sitting but it's a Kia Picanto as you can see at the minute cooker and gubbins down the way with the fridge the fridge is a massive big deal and a massive thing that has to find space for it really is but it's paramount for me to go away on long trips and then after that I've got some of my cooking equipment a few clothes and where I'm going to keep the heater down here is all my cooking equipment in a 51 litre box. I don't know, normally that's pretty full. Under there, which I can't really show you at the back under the driver's seat, I've got my water, a few frying pans, Ridge Monkey, and the spare gas for the cooker over yonder, which then leaves two small sections under here where I'm sitting and sleeping. The front one under the glove box, which is also usable for a few bits, is what I'm using for wet clothes and outdoor clothes and my boots in a bag. And then exactly where my butt sits, I'm gonna be putting another pile of clothes. We're literally totally limited on the space. So yeah, if I'd have put a diesel eater in there, I would have had no space for clothes and my outdoor gear. I need an area where those wet things can go. Maybe I'm gonna get some sort of plastic sheeting in there or just get it properly sorted. But it's a Kia Picanto. We're limited for space. And to be realistically, like, yeah, I might do a little trip to Wales in it to test it out in a few weeks' time, but I'm hoping to get somewhere warm of it for maybe a month or two. 
and then when I come back from there, hopefully it's getting a bit warmer here. We have done Scotland last year in minus 10 with no heater, at least for the minute or for the time being. I've got that little thing. So, yeah. Which, to be honest, for now, it's going to be a good little tester for the inverter that's under there. Unfortunately, that means I've got to go in the boggy field and pull everything out so I can actually plug it all in because I didn't do it before. Got it. Squelchy mud. What the hell was I thinking? Nightmare. Anyway, more importantly. Yeah, inverter's plugged in. Uh, I'm so glad it's that way around because I was a little bit worried I wouldn't be able to plug a plug in. <laughs> but hey ho, we have. I just need to turn it on. Oh, Christ. Get my down there. Bear with. Uh, there's an isolator. You might be able to see it. Where is it? I can't. Oh, I feel it. That should have done it. Let's have a look. Oh yeah baby, we got power. Wicked. Boom, so from the inverter all the way to a four-way plug socket with USB ports on it as well. Three of, and a white, a blue light. I like a blue light. All right, let's see if it works. Oh, whoa, oh they're buttons, not an actual switch. That's unusual. Oh, I was expecting your normal sort of switch, you know? Pretty cool. Mm, smells a bit funky might turn it down a little bit this thing's weird man it's just like it has no variable it's it's just on dude it don't even turn off so random you have to lift it up so the bottom lifts and it's got one of them like safety devices but yeah it's, it's a bit random i don't quite get it but hey it's a little bit of warm air oh, i need it as well i guess i could just like put it down near my feet at some point to be fair though, this is going to be the thing. Dude, whoa, I've got a low voltage warning. Oh my God, 95%. Oh, that's weird. It is, I don't know, maybe it's that. Something wrong with it. Oh, nightmare. Oh, this is cool. Knowledge is key. I've just called Jason. Let me show you what happens. So I'll turn it on and it may take a few seconds um, but we're going to get a little error pop up say low voltage and there it is so the error pops up so if I just turn that off a second what the problem is if we go into the settings and this is really cool because like I'm actually getting to learn how to do stuff with this you can set the low voltage alarm settings so I'm just going to bring that down to like I think I'm going to go 12.6 uh, well, 12.5 and 12.6 on the clear value, and that now, when I turn it back on, will not pop up that error because I've just tried it. That's wicked. I'm stoked. Oh, I can warm my feet up. <laughs> wicked, mate. I don't know. Jason was saying like there is a safety value. You obviously can't bring it down to zero. Um, lithium and like your lead acid batteries work on a different level but if you're saying he's got his lithium set to about 12.8 but i'm happy with 12.5 i don't think it's going to cause me any issues and i can stay warm ah. still about an hour to wait oh well the boys have turned up let's see how this one rolls out yeah i think i've just got that just or maybe not <laughs> Let's check it off. Hello, yeah. Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got there. Uh-uh. Do you want me to hold the torch? I'm thinking it's just the whip for that. That's all we need. Oh. <laughs> 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 you bastards, man. The worst thing is, my winch will... Well, I can't really show you because there's no light, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm finally on solid ground, nightmare and safe. I just want to do one thing. I want to test the rockers, see how much mud's on them. <laughs> yeah, two of them look good. Um, yeah, them, them. Oh, crud, those front ones are looking a bit baked. How do they not get mud all over them? Oh, they are a little bit baked. <laughs> anyway, the back one's totally clean. I don't understand it. There must be about two foot's worth of mud on the bottom of that. <laughs> Tell you what though, the old spotties are looking good, aren't they? Wicked mate. Boom shanker. Ah, oh, so stoked. But I'm actually somewhere safe now with the car. And I'm just going to drive home now and I will catch you in a bit.
Morning. Oh my days, mate. It's like the calm after the storm this morning. I can't believe it. I was so happy to get back to the homestead last night. At points yesterday, I started thinking I might end up leaving that car in that field for weeks upon end. It was a nightmare. And I should say, I thank Ashley, who organised all that yesterday, but it was actually Mark and Mark's van and Ashley that turned up last night. So, Mark, mate, you're a bloody legend. I don't know what I would have done without you and, and Ashley last night. Thank goodness we weren't parked in Scotland. <laughs> for now, though, I think this is going to be the best point to end the episode. I genuinely hope you've enjoyed this one and had a big giggle at me suffering and having a lot of trauma yesterday. It was cool. We just got out and we tested a load of stuff out. And to be honest, I think tomorrow I'm going to be going out in this again a little bit more into the wild. So that's probably coming up in Sunday's episode. But for now, if you did enjoy this one, all the good stuff. Hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series. And definitely hit me in the comments. I love reading for all those. And as always, you know, you know, take it easy. Enjoy the camp. Get out, mate. Whatever the weather. Just wrap up and do it. And stay stealthy. Amen.